Why did the Fire Safety Research Institute burn a Hyundai Kona? And what do they expect to learn from it? I'm very fortunate to be on the technical panel for fire safety of batteries and electric vehicles. This group is working alongside of the Fire Safety Research Institute, part of UL. Back in November, I was at their facility in Northbrook, Illinois to witness some of the first testing. This is baseline testing where we're burning a combustion engine vehicle with future plans to burn electric vehicles, multiple electric vehicles over the next three years. And before visiting, I've seen this facility before in different videos. They build houses. They built two houses side by side inside of this facility before. And it measures 120 feet by 120 feet. And the ceiling is adjustable. It goes all the way down to four foot tall all the way up to 40 foot tall. And how does it make the ceiling rise and fall? Well, it's very similar to a hydraulic elevator. There's four of these large cylinders in each corner of the room that help raise and lower that ceiling. It's truly remarkable standing inside of this facility, standing out on the floor, it's very ominous. The walls are dark, they seem to go on forever. The lights high up on the wall, Again, it really feels like something out of a sci-fi film. So why are we burning a vehicle that has an internal combustion engine when this study's all about electric vehicles? Well, proper science, you need a baseline. And the combustion engine vehicle, it fits with every other vehicle that we fight fires on today. So that's why we're starting with the combustion engine vehicle to get that baseline, to have good data moving forward so we can see what the differences are between combustion engine vehicles and electric vehicles. For this test, this vehicle has a full tank of gas, all the engine oil, all the radiator fluid, all the fluids that would be in it during normal driving conditions. They're collecting a ton of data. I was just there for the test itself. They spent the previous two and a half days setting up all the instrumentation, all the thermal couples, all the air monitoring sensors. A ton of work is going into this, over 30 people working hard to make this test happen. Just some of the things they're looking at. They've got everything thermocoupled, thermocouples under the hood to measure the temperature rise as this thing catches on fire, thermocouples in the interior of the vehicle, all around the vehicle. These two giant panels that are right up next to the vehicle, these are designed with arrays of thermocouples. They also have thermal imagers looking at the backs of these panels to get a reading of the radiant heat coming off that vehicle, to simulate a vehicle parked right next to it maybe in a parking lot, for example, because they want to determine the heat from that vehicle, from that fire, at what point will it start the car next to it on fire. They have an array of air monitoring sensors all around this vehicle to try to understand the exposure firefighters will get when they're walking around a vehicle fire. They're taking air samples above the vehicle, way up high, to determine what type of chemicals are in the smoke, eventually comparing all this data to electric vehicles. Down low, We've got this pan, this giant pan. It serves two purposes. Number one, there's four scales underneath this. The scales are measuring the weight of the vehicle and as that vehicle burns, it's losing mass. So they can tell how hot the fire is, how much heat is being released from the fire as everything's being burned away. This pan also works to catch water. Towards the end of the test, firefighters are gonna put water on this vehicle, just enough to coat the vehicle, fill that pan with water so they can take water samples, understand what is in the water runoff. They wanna look at gear contamination. This again is baseline testing. They wanna see how contaminated our gear is just from being around a vehicle fire. So they've got swatches of gear in different strategic locations around this vehicle. To light this vehicle on fire, they took a burner and actually put it under the engine. They fired that burner up, got the flames nice and hot until there was a self-sustaining fire. Then they took the burner away. As a firefighter, it's very rare to be in a vehicle fire from start to finish. We usually get a call somewhere in the middle. But for this vehicle fire, it was impressive. For the baseline testing, they lit this vehicle on fire, they allowed it to burn all the way through. This is just, again, baseline testing to collect lots and lots of data. I've said it numerous times, combustion engine vehicles, even with a full tank of gas, they don't explode. That's something that you see in Hollywood, that's not something you see in real life. But what you do see in real life are a lot of bangs, pops, and booms from things like the air conditioning system. Or tires. Ooh, first tire. 
and then later on, multiple airbags going off in sequence. Now, this thing was impressive to watch. Again, I've seen a lot of vehicle fighters, but not quite like this. The multiple camera setups, the multiple TVs, the multiple views of the fire up in the observation deck, it was pretty awesome. What shocked me was the amount of sooty smoke coming off this vehicle. It just reminds you how much plastic are in these vehicles. But this room was so massive, 120 feet by 120 feet, 40 foot tall ceilings, and we still got to the point where we went down to zero visibility in this room even with a large ventilation system sucking that smoke out of the room. I also wasn't expecting to feel all that radiant heat coming through the glass in the observation deck. After the fire was out, after the room was ventilated, an army of scientists went into the test chamber, white Tyvek suits, respirators to start gathering data from all their sensors. You can see here, there's not a lot left of this vehicle, the burnt out shell, the engine on the ground, the motor mounts melted right away nothing left internal to the vehicle. It's just a carcass at this point. The data still needs to be analyzed, but overall it was a successful test. We learned a lot and we look forward to comparing this data to the data we're gonna get next year when we burn multiple electric vehicles.